In this video I'm going to show you how I make my bracelet style smartwatch straps. This one here is made with black 2mm thread and a bunch of different beads that range in size from about 3 or 4mm up to 6 or 7mm. I make my watch straps to go around the wrist five times, so it's sort of like five separate bracelets. So I've got two on each side of the watch and then this one in the middle is the same type of beads on each side to look like another bracelet. Then it's secured in place with a button and knot clasp. I make them in all different colours and styles. This is the tan coloured thread. I use different coloured beads and smartwatch connectors as well. You can usually get them in gold and silver and black for whichever type of smartwatch you have. And you can also choose some really funky metal buttons. Just be aware these bracelet style watch straps are not floppy like bracelets. They need to hold the watch nice and securely onto your arm so that your watch can keep registering. Otherwise it's gonna keep asking you for your password. So it's really important that you can wrap them around nice and securely onto your wrist. Now for the two straps. So this one here I call the top strap. It's the one with the button on it. Both straps start with that same type of bead on each side of the watch for the first bracelet. Then each strap has two different other types of beads to form two different bracelets. These beads here sit in between the two threads and these ones here are sitting on top of the threads. I'm going to show you both techniques. Then we've got our button on the end. I'll put some really detailed notes at the end of this video so you can screenshot and it will have all the measurements and sizes and all of that stuff there. Now the second strap or the bottom strap which is the one with the knots on the end also has that first type of bead at the start and then it has the other two different types of beads for two different bracelets. These are all four millimeter beads on this strap. Then on the end we pop our little knots and that creates a little closure there for your button. If you're making them to sell or for someone you don't know the exact wrist size, I'll show you how to put a couple of extra knots on there just so you can adjust the length of it. You can play around making these with a bunch of different types of thread and beads. I've made this one here with leather. You can see it's a bit shinier but it still sits on the connector really nicely. I've put a little charm on this one as well, just before that first knot. So if you're making these to sell and you have one for your business, you could pop a little charm on there as well. You can see on the end here, I've got these extra knots for a bit of extra length on the clasp. The connectors I'm using today are for my Apple Watch. I'm not too sure how you remove the straps for other smartwatches, but Apple Watches have this little button here just underneath the connector there that you can push and then slide the strap out. They're quite simple to change the straps if you've got a few different colours. Same on this side, pushing that little button and gently sliding that strap out. I'm going to show you how I wear my Apple Watch strap so it has a nice secure fit. Some people struggle with these straps because they think they should be loose, sort of like bracelets, but they do need to sit tight-ish on your arm for your smartwatch to work properly and register. So I just place my watch onto my wrist and then I'll grab this first strap and wrap it around. Then on the next one I go in towards the watch. And then the same with the other strap, I go out first and then in towards the watch. Then I put my little button through the closure there. I just find that having it pulled sort of inwards helps the watch stay in place. If it doesn't touch my skin properly, it's gonna keep asking for my passcode all the time because it thinks it's been taken off. You don't want them sort of wiggling loose as the day goes on, but I find if I do them up like this, I can go the whole day without having to re-put my password in or maybe just with one adjustment of the strap. I'm going to make this bracelet strap first. So I call this one the top strap. This is the one I do the two different techniques for attaching the beads onto the strap. And it's also the one with the button at the end. So measuring this one right from the connector there to the button on the end is about 16 inches. Don't forget you can have a look at the end of this video to screenshot all the measurements. 
Then we've got the second strap, or the one I call the bottom strap, which is the one with the knots on the end. And measuring from the connector to the first knot is about 16 inches. Then it's got three more knots about one inch apart, so the knots are at 16, 17, 18 and 19 inches. This is my personal watch strap, so I've only got two knots there at 16 and 17 inches. I just wanted to show you this as well. See how I've squeezed so many beads on here? When you wrap them around, they actually start to pop upwards. So this one here, these beads are squeezed in a little bit too tight. See, there's another one there that's popped up. Although you do want them close together, see there's a couple on this one here that have popped up. You just don't want them really tightly squeezed on there. So they've got a little bit of movement when you wrap it around your wrist. Now we're going to start with our top strap, which is the one with the button on it. And I've got my two little Apple Watch connectors here. These are stainless steel and the 42 to 45 millimeter size. They have a few little grooves which slide into the watch to lock it in place. Then I've got a really cute little metal button here. It's about 17 mil wide. I've got thread, I've got a lighter, I've got a little clip to sort of help me hold onto the thread while I'm weaving it. And I've also got my two millimeter waxed twine here. This is a really durable cord and it's perfect for things like watch straps or sliding knot bracelets. For this first strap, the top strap with the button, we use about 60 inches of our two millimeter waxed twine. So I just measure that out and cut it to length. I'm making a standard size today, so if you do want to make longer ones, have a look at my measurements at the end and I give you all the details for those as well. This one is just sort of for an average size standard wrist of about 16 or 17 centimetres around. Once I've measured out my 65 inches, I just singe the ends with a lighter to stop them from fraying. Now the first thing we do is find the middle. So I just place the ends together and follow it back down to the other end and the middle is there. On my little connectors, they have a little silver button in the middle and that part goes on the bottom of it. So these little black ones that are pushed out are on the top. You want your connector up the right way when you start doing your strap. So in my case, I've got my little silver button pointing downwards. And this is the top here with the raised black parts. So we start with the middle of our thread here and poke it down through the connector and then pull the rest of the thread through the loop there. Pull that little knot nice and tight up onto the connector. With this knot sitting nice and tight and in the middle, we're going to work across the connector on either side of this first knot. Starting on this left side, and I'm just grabbing this left hand thread and poking the end of it down the connector. Bringing it most of the way through, but leaving a little loop there that we just bring the end of the thread through and then pull it nice and tight. That makes half of the knot and now we're just going to make the other half. So again with the end of your thread, grabbing the end there and this time we poke it up the connector, bringing it most of the way through except for that little loop at the end and then poking it down through the loop and pulling it nice and tight. You should have two little knots the same there on your connector and you can pull them nice and tight and they'll look nice and tidy. You want to work with your threads and keep checking that they are nice and tight. You don't want any slack there that might come loose when you're wearing your watch. So just keep checking and pull them all nice and tight. We're going to work along the other side now. Grabbing this right hand thread to start off with we go down the connector. And then we're going to bring the cord up through that little loop that's created there. Pulling it nice and tight. So that's your first half of the knot. And then for the second half, 
we go up the connector and then down through the loop pulling that one really nice and tight as well working with your threads to make sure they're all nice and tight it's up to you how many knots you put onto these connectors I usually put four sometimes five depending on what sort of thread it is and how I want it to look I do like it to be really nice and secure onto the connector so I'm going to do a fourth knot here again with the end of our thread just starting off with the first half of the knot going down the connector pulling it most of the way through and then going up that loop and the second half of the knot coming up the connector and then down the little loop just checking to make sure all your little knots are sitting the same way and sitting nice and tidy and tight then we can move on to stitching our beads onto the strap At this point I'm going to use a little clip, you might have a clipboard or something like that that you can use to just hold it secure. I'm using a little bulldog clip today, it just helps me hold it on one end so that I can start the weaving. And we're going to sew or weave our beads in between these two threads down to make the strap. So you can see this one here, we're going to start with our first beaded colour. This one makes the first bracelet, so it's the same colour on both sides of the watch. So we start both straps off with this first colour. I've got my five different types of beads here, or complementary colours of beads. You could do the whole strap the same, it's totally up to you, but I like to do five different types and that makes it look like you've got five different bracelets. So we're going to do these two different techniques. We've got this first one with the beads weaved in between the threads. And then this one here with these beads are sort of raised on top of the strap. So you can see when I wrap the strap around, you're going to have two and a half bracelets on this one side. To sew our beads on today, we need a nice long piece of strong cotton. I'm using polyester cotton. For this part here, we need about 70 inches of our nice thin strong sewing cotton. It does need to be a really nice, good quality cotton. You also want to try and keep it doubled over so that it's as short as it can be because you really don't want it getting any knots in the cotton while you're working and when it's quite long, it's quite hard to avoid knots. We also need some sort of needle, either a beading needle or a sewing needle is okay as long as it's not too sharp and you're not going to hurt yourself. So we thread our cotton through the needle and we're going to start by just tying the end of our cotton onto the top here. Somewhere onto the knot there where your thread and knot is going to be nice and hidden. And you also want it on the top part so it's not going to slip down the side. I just go under a little loop here and then tie it on at this other end. Making sure you've done a decent little knot there so it's nice and secure and not just attached to the side. Then I can cut that little tail off. Now you want this little sewing thread coming off the right hand cord so that it can come off the same way the whole way down. So I'm just bringing it around this cord a couple of times and then we're going to start to pop our beads on. You want it coming just over the front here on the right hand side and then you can pop your little clip on somewhere secure. While we're beading this down we need to make sure we're beading it evenly so that it's coming down perfectly straight. Now you need your first type of beads sorted out so figure out what they are. I'm using these little purple ones to start off with. They're about four millimetres each bead and I'm going to start out making my strap wider and then slowly using less beads to make the strap come in thinner. For this first layer I'm using three of these purple beads. So I just place them onto my needle 
and then we lay the needle down across both of the twines on the top and with the beads sitting in between the two threads there. Then I just hold the beads on with my thumb and pull the needle and the thread over to the left hand side. Pulling it gently and trying to avoid knots. Then we can bring our needle around the thread on the side and we're just going to go back through the beads on the back side of the strap as well. Pulling that thread tight so that your sewing thread has gone around the left hand side of the strap. Your beads should be threaded onto that top layer of the strap. You can just work with them to make sure they're sitting in the right position and that your strap is going to be even and coming down straight. Your cotton thread should be at the back of the right hand side thread there. Now we're going to put our next beads on. I'm just popping two beads on now to start to gradually bring this strap down a little bit smaller. Again we just place the needle on the front there with the beads, holding it on with my thumb and bringing our cotton to the left hand side. Now we can bring it around this thread on the left hand side and then pop the needle back through the beads on the back of the strap and gently pull our threads tight. Just wiggling those beads into the right position and your thread again should be at the back of the right hand side of the strap. You might need slightly different amounts of beads if you're using smaller ones, but basically you're trying to have the strap size come off the knots and slowly make it down to only being one bead wide. So I'm going to put another two beads on this next layer. Placing it on the strap there, holding with our thumb and bringing the thread across to the left hand side. Bringing it around the back to go back through the beads. To secure it in the middle of the strap there. Quite a simple technique and it's basically just sewing those beads into the middle of the strap. So my next layer here is my fourth layer. I'm just going to pop one bead on now and see how that looks. If I'm happy with that it will just be the one bead now for the whole rest of the strap. Same again with this next bead. Placing the bead onto the needle and then the needle onto the front of the strap. Pulling the needle through and then going around that twine on the left hand side and back through the bead on the back. For this first colour or type of beads we do the first three inches on both straps with this one colour. So just measure it right down from the end of the connector there and about three inches down and that makes the first bracelet. Once you're happy with the size of your strap there and it's gone down to just one bead, we're just going to continue the same technique of sewing the beads into the centre of the two threads there for each bracelet type. So this first colour we do down to about 3 inches and then we swap onto another colour which we do about one bracelet length, so about 16 centimetres. And then for the last one on this strap I'm going to show you that other technique where we sew the beads on top of the strap. I'm just going to continue with this first 3 inches of this first bracelet type. And then I'll do the second bead type as well which is the same technique. But then for that third bracelet type, I'm going to change it to that different technique. So I'll slow it down again there and explain what I'm doing. Don't forget to have a look at the end of this video for all the detailed measurements and instructions. Once you've weaved in the second bracelet colour, about one bracelet length or about 16 centimetres, then we can tie our sewing thread 
onto one of the cords from the strap. Just tying it onto either side, a nice secure little knot there, and that's going to hold those beads in place. You can see it makes a really nice tidy weave. All those little beads sitting in between the straps there, nice and tidy. And you can see my thread wrapping around each side of the strap as well. It's really nice if you can keep it nice and tidy and it looks uniform the whole way down. Now we're going to move on to our third type of bead for our third sort of bracelet type there, but this is going to be the one where the beads are sewn onto the top of the strap. Like these blue beads here, they're raised and sit on top of the strap, so it's a slightly different technique for weaving them on there. I use a much thicker cotton cord for this technique here. This is a 0.6 millimeter cotton twine that I use for knotting. You can see the difference between the sewing cotton and then this thicker cotton that I use for knotting amber necklaces. I find it works really well for this technique. Now I'm using about 50 inches of our 0.6 millimeter cotton knotting twine and I'm going to use these little blue pearl beads. So the threads for your strap sort of sit together and the beads are going to sit on the top of them. I find for this part, it really helps if you can attach your strap on the top and the bottom. So if you can find a way to do that, it definitely makes it easier. Now with our knotting thread here, we want to find the middle. So I just place the ends together and follow it back down to the middle. And it's at this part here that we're going to put a little knot here to attach it onto our strap. So I just start with one really simple knot there. Putting it around both twines and the little piece of cotton. Pull it really nice and tight just at the spot where the beads finish. Now at this point we're going to pop a couple of square knots on for our raised beaded bracelet section. We start with our left cord coming down and over to the right over the top of the two threads there and then with our right hand cord we take that down and underneath and it comes up the loop on the left hand side. It's a little bit tricky to see with my cords being a bit curly. Pulling that square knot really nice and tight and then we're going to alternate the stitches. So that one started with the left hand cord going over. This next one we're going to start with a right hand cord coming around and over. And then the left cord goes down and underneath and then up that loop on the right hand side. For a flat square knot, we alternate each stitch and pull it nice and tight in between. So again, we're back to the left hand side, going around and over the top, and then the right one goes underneath and up that loop on the left hand side, pulling it nice and tight and then back to the right side. So right hand goes across and over, and left one goes underneath and up the loop on the right hand side. At the top here, and usually at the bottom as well, I do about four stitches. Just gives a nice secure start and finish to this beaded section. Now we're going to start to attach our beads onto this section. So we need another length of about 20 inches of the 0.6 millimeter cotton knotting twine. This cord is just going to sit straight down the middle and hold all the beads on it. So we need to put a nice little knot here on the end. I'm doing a couple of really simple little overhand knots there just so it can't slip through. Once you've got a really good little knot there, you can thread your twine onto a needle and we're going to poke it down underneath those square knots. So just tidy up my end a little bit there and then popping it onto the needle. And you've got this little section up here of the square knots that you just did and that's a nice tight knot there. So I'm just going to poke my needle down underneath the knots there, 
they can be a bit tight but that's actually a good thing so just work with your needle until you can poke it down underneath those little square knots there I'm using a few other things just to help me push it through but that's going to be a really nice secure connection if it's that tight My needle was probably a little bit big for this job, but anyway, I get it through. And then you just want to pull your thread down until the knot is sitting there at the top of the square knots. Now that latest thread that we've just attached is the one that we're going to pop our beads onto. You can start by putting a bunch of them on or just one at a time, that's up to you. I'm just going to cut that previous sewing thread off from the last bracelet. Now we're going to just push one bead at a time to the top there and then we're back to our square knots. So in between each bead we're going to do two stitches of square knots. So this first stitch is the left over the right and then the right hand cord goes underneath and up that loop on the left hand side. So that's one stitch and the second stitch is the right hand cord coming across and then the left cord going underneath and up that loop on the right hand side. I'm pulling these in between square knot stitches quite tight and making sure that they're going to be evenly placed the whole way down this bracelet portion. We just continue on with the same technique which is just threading the beads on, pushing one bead to the top there. I'm just gonna put a bunch of beads onto this thread that makes it easier as I can just slide one up at a time in between the square knots. Now with your one little bead at the top there, you can continue on doing your little square knot stitches. So left over right and then the right one underneath and up the loop and then the opposite stitch. We're going to continue on with this technique and this bracelet type just these little blue beads for about 16 or 17 centimeters. You want to go all the way down on your strap now until you can measure about 16 inches from the end of your connector right down to where we're going to place the button on. I'm going to just go ahead and do that section there and then when I'm at the end I will slow it down again and show you how I put my buttons on. Once you've beaded that section down 16 or 17 centimetres, you want to bead your whole strap down to probably about 15 and a half inches, just so you've got a little bit of space there to tie your knot and then your button can sit at about 16 inches. Sometimes it works out that some of the bracelets are a little bit longer or a little bit shorter, but your whole strap needs to be about 16 inches. Make sure you do a couple of square knots at the end of that section as well. I normally do about four just to lock it all in place, make sure it's nice and secure there. Then we can pop our button on. So just threading it onto one of our threads and bringing it right down close to the end of our bracelet there. We're going to tie our button on with a type of barrel knot. So just pop that button onto one of your threads and then this other thread here, we pretty much just ignore it. I just bring it over to the right hand side and then with this thread that your button is on, we just bring it around and up over the bracelet. Then we bring it down and around all of those other threads for three loops around. So there's the first loop, the second loop, and the third loop. With the third loop, we don't bring it the whole way around. We sort of bring it halfway around and then just bring that tail up through the loop that the button is on. Now you can gently work with all your threads in the knot to pull them all nice and tight and make sure that your knot is going to sit nice and close down to the end of your bracelet section. 
You do want this knot to be super tight and to not have any play there or wriggle room where it can extend longer or have your button fall off or anything. It's really worth taking some extra time now to work those threads through the knot and make sure it's all nice and tight before you cut the ends off and singe them on. Once you're happy with your little barrel knot and it's pulled really nice and tight up next to the bracelet part, you can snip both of your tails off. Try and leave a little bit of length there because we're going to singe the ends with a lighter and you really want to be able to melt all these end parts together. I melt it and then push on it with the lighter there. You really want that knot to be sort of sealed and have the ends melted onto the knot and it all sort of locked in together. Okay, so you should have one completed smartwatch strap now. When it wraps around, it should be sort of two and a half worth of bracelet there. So you can see I've got the blue one there and then the silver one and then half of the purple one which will be on the other side of the watch as well. Now moving on to the second half of our bracelet strap with our second connector there. So we're making now the second strap or what I call the bottom strap. This is the one with the knots on the end for the button clasp. Measuring from the connector all the way to the first knot there is about 16 inches. This is my personal strap here, so I've just got knots at 16 and 17 inches. If I'm making one for sale, I do four knots and they're at 16, 17, 18 and 19 inches. So four knots one inch apart and that gives you a nice varied size for your bracelet strap. Again, I'm just making this strap for an average size wrist about 16 or 17 centimetres around but I will put those detailed measurements at the end of the video so you can screenshot them there. So for this bottom strap we need about 65 inches of our 2mm waxed cord. So I just cut that to length and then singed the ends so it doesn't fray. Now again we find the centre of the cord by putting the two ends together and following it back down. Again, we're going to place the middle of our cord here onto the watch strap connector. With our little Apple Watch connector here, we've got this little silver button. And that little button goes on the downward side. So we start with our connector up this way with the little black parts poking upwards. Then we can poke the middle of our twine down through the connector and then bring the rest of the twine through the loop and pull it nice and tight. Now we're going to work across the connector on each side of this first knot just to secure the top of our strap in place. I'm going to do four knots on this side of the connector just like I did on the first strap. I'm working to the left to start with so just grabbing that left thread and poking it down the connector. Pulling it most of the way through and then just poking the end up that loop. Pulling that nice and tight. That's the first half of that little knot there. Then with our end again we bring the tail up the connector. And then down that little loop it created there. So that's our second full knot there. So just pull it really nice and tight. And it should look just like the first knot on your connector there. We're just pulling them really tight and over to that one side and then we can work on the other side. Remember you don't want these knots to have any extra play in them or they're going to pull looser on your watch when you're wearing it. So with this tail on the right hand side, just bringing the end and poking it down the connector, pulling it most of the way through and then bringing the end up the loop for the first half of that knot. Pulling that first half of the knot tight and then bringing the end up the connector and taking it down through that loop. So that's three full knots there. Just 
working with my threads to pull it nice and tight. And I'm going to squeeze one more knot on here as well. So I'll just do this last one to the right. First with our twine, poking it down through the connector. Bringing the end up the little loop there. And then the other half of the knot is bringing our end up the connector and then down through the loop. Just making sure all four of our knots are as tight as they can be and that they all look the same. Now we can pop our little connector there onto a clip or whatever setup you have and we can move on to beading our strap. On our first strap that we made, this top one here, we did the first three inches with this purple type of bead. So again, we're going to do the first three inches with the same purple type to match on both sides of the watch. Now to sew our beads on for the strap here, we need about 80 inches of our polyester cotton sewing thread. So I just measure that out and we're going to pop that onto our beading needle and start popping our beads on. On this strap we're going to bead the beads in between the two twines the whole way down with the same technique that we used on the first strap. I'm just threading my cotton onto my needle and then we're going to tie the cotton onto one of the knots. Remember that it has to go onto one of the knots at the top not just onto the side thread or it might slip down your strap. I'm just tucking it into that knot there and then tying a nice strong little knot into our cotton there to secure it onto the strap. I do go a little bit off screen here, but I'm just tying that cotton on in a nice secure little knot. Now we can start to stitch our beads into our strap. I just want to start again with this cotton coming off the right hand side so I just wrap it around that twine on the right hand side a couple of times so that it can come off that side like all the rest of the threads are as we go down. You can cut that other little tail off now. Then it's just the same technique as we used on the other side and we'll do the same amount of beads as well just to keep it nice and even. You want to try and make sure your cotton is doubled over quite far as well so that you can pull it out gently without getting knots in your thread. Now to be matchy matchy with the other side strap we put three beads onto this first layer so I just start by getting three beads onto my needle placing the needle across the two threads on the front there so that the beads sit in between the two threads. Then holding it on with my thumb so that we can pull that thread over towards the left hand side. Then we bring our needle around this thread on the left hand side and bring the needle back through all the beads on the back there. Pulling all of that thread gently through the beads now your thread should be coming around the back of the right hand side of the strap. Now onto the second layer. On our other strap we did two beads on this layer. So we're going to get our two beads onto our needle and do the same again with our cotton coming around from the right hand side. Then we're just placing our needle down with the beads in between the two threads there, pulling it across and bringing the needle around that left side strap and back through the beads on the back. 
pulling it nice and gently all the way through so that your cotton is then again on the back of the right hand side of the strap. Remember that as you work down the strap, we want to make sure that we're pulling our strap nice and straight. So you can keep adjusting these beads and just make sure it's coming off straight. Now onto our next row, same as the other strap, which is another layer of two beads. Placing them onto my needle and then onto the strap in between the two threads, bringing your needle across and around that thread on the left and then bringing your needle back through the beads on the back side of the strap. So I've got three, two, two and now I'm going to place one bead on this next layer. Then from now on we can just do the whole rest of the strap with one bead in between each thread. Same technique, just placing this one bead onto the needle and bringing your needle across and then around onto the back to come through that bead again on the back side of the strap. Now remember with this first colour we're going to bead it down to match the other strap so it's about three inches down from the connector. Once you're at the three inch mark we're going to swap onto the fourth beaded colour and do one bracelet length or 16 to 17 centimetres of that beaded colour and then we can swap onto our fifth beaded colour for our final stretch of 16 to 17 centimetres. Then again we're going to bead all the way down to about 15 and a half inches so that we can put our first knot at about the 16 inch mark and that's going to be the start of our little knotted connector for our button. So I'm just going to keep beading all the way down now to that knot around the 16 inch mark so that I can show you how I make my button and knot clasps. Once you've beaded all the way down to about 15 and a half inches, you want your first knot to be able to sit at about the 16 inch mark. So it's helpful if your beads stop a little bit before then. The beads don't pop up as much on the strap either if they're not too tightly squeezed in there. Once you're done with your beads, you want to tie your cotton thread onto one of the threads on the side. Then we can tie a knot with both the threads from your strap at about the 16 inch mark. I just do a simple overhand knot, which is just both threads around each other and then pull the tail through. You want to try and pull it down onto that 16 inch mark. Pulling it really nice and tight on all the threads. So you can see we've got our one knot there at 16 inches. Just making sure all your beads are sitting nice and flat. I'll just cut that little thread of cotton off. Now we're going to tie some extra knots on for our clasp. It just makes the bracelet adjustable with a few different sizes here. So here I put the little knots about one inch apart. So I'm putting one at 16, one at 17, one at 18 and one at 19. So you just want to really pull them nice and tight down onto that inch mark. 
this is really helpful if you are going to sell the straps if you're just making it for yourself you would probably work out your custom size and then just have one little clasp with two knots there like I've got on my other bracelet I've just got one knot at 16 and one knot at 17 and that fits me perfectly Now when you've popped your knots on, you can just cut the ends of these threads off nice and even and then singe the ends as well. Now that you've finished your straps, you can take them for a spin. <laughs> Try them on, see how they go for size. On my Apple Watch, I just have these two little buttons here on the underside that I can push and slide the strap out. So it's really easy to swap different straps on. Now remember these bracelet straps are not made to sit like bracelets. They need to sit pretty much with the watch up against your skin so that the watch can register. So you really need to make sure that they are pulled tight enough that they're sitting up against your skin all the time or it's gonna keep asking you for your password. But there is a bit of a knack to wrapping these straps around. The best way I have found to do it is wrap the strap around outwards first and then inwards towards the watch. Same with the other strap, outwards first and then in towards the watch. And then you can put your button through the clasp for the tightest one that will fit. I find having that sort of tension pulling it inwards helps to keep the bracelet nice and secure on your wrist. Occasionally I still have to adjust them anyway, but mostly it's okay if I wrap it like this. They are a little bit different to the average watch straps, so they take a bit of getting used to, but they are pretty cute, so I think it's worth it. So there's your beaded bracelet style smartwatch straps. If you're looking for all the measurements and sizes, just hang tight, I'm going to put them on a nice delayed screen for you. I really hope they're helpful.